Today's sponsor of the Vision Quest podcast is 920 Hat Company. Leather patch hats are in, and 920 Hat Company is here to hook you up with your very own custom hat. All patches are lasered on top grade genuine leather and on popular brand hats like Richardson and FlexFit. Whether you're looking to show off your business or want a one-of-a-kind hat for yourself, 920 Hat Company can do it all. All the hats are handcrafted right in the Fox Valley, but worn across America. With over 500 hats in stock, they guarantee fast turnaround times. Honestly, Liam, you know, looking at these hats, solid, right? Yeah, they're pretty, I like them. I like that patch, that patch itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of a kind stuff. Uh, I know his name is Trevor. Uh, he does great work. He's actually gotten what? I think we got some a knit hat coming. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got that coming. So uh, we're really excited to have these guys on board as a sponsor. So uh, get uh, get down to check them out on Facebook. I believe they're on Instagram. Uh, check them out, man. They got the best hats, I think, in the Fox Valley, if not in the state. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, get down to 920 Hat Company on social media and check them out. Live, dude. We're live. We're live. We're live, bro. So we are joined for yet another awesome podcast. I have in my studio, which people kind of guessed or didn't know if I did or didn't have. Well, I have. So I'm uh I'm on that camera right there. See, and then he's on the other one over there. But we are joined with three time state champion from Denmark. Brock Berglund, also a three-point takedown owner. Uh, let's give him a hand. Appreciate you coming in, man. Appreciate it. How you doing? Doing you, well. Yeah, so we we're just kind of talking about the three-point takedown, talking about this this thing that you're trying to grow. Let's let's kind of start off with that, and then we'll kind of – then we'll dig into the Brock Berglund story. So yeah, yeah. you start – how 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 did you get this started? Like, what made you want to do it? What was the key? 
Yeah, so, um, and, you know, maybe a couple people that watch this will know, um, but Flickr used to be, like, a huge platform for trading wrestling shoes back in the day. So, okay. you know, I mean, I grew up my whole life, obviously, you know, wearing wrestling shoes while I'm wrestling. Yeah. Um, but also, like, there was, like, a huge, like, collector side of it, and, like, people would pay, like, oodles and oodles of money for, like, these shoes that were, like, sold out, um, <laughs> et cetera. And like to like at all these big national tournaments, like people would trade shoes, singlets or whatever. Yeah. So it's, it was like a very niche market at the time. Um, but there was like one thing that was like for certain. And it's like, you know, like I just felt like the, like the wrestling shoe community as I've grown up through age, like it's just very lazy. I mean, obviously wrestling shoes, they're not tens and twenties of millions of dollars of like, yeah. you know, like it's, it's just, it's never going to be that mainstream. Yep. Um, but with that has kind of become laziness. And, you know, I think, you know, throughout time, like some, you know, like there's been stuff that's done right. Like yeah. there's been, there's been shoes at good price points that are awesome shoes. Um, but like those shoes come and go. And also too, like a lot of those shoes, like, I mean, you'll see the Adidas combats, like those things haven't changed in 30 years. Right. And right. And like, there's been like no innovation with like the Gresser and like the inflict and like whatever. And like, I'm not saying that like, that makes them bad shoes, but like yeah. you're charging 130, 140 bucks for shoes that have been out for eight years and you've done nothing with them. To, yeah, to improve. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of like, you know, like a huge opportunity for me. Um, you know, and I kind of with like Adobe Photoshop and stuff, like I just started going and, yeah. and sketching a little bit based on some different designs that I've seen throughout my life and yeah. shoes that I've actually worn and like really liked well, and then just tried to you know, try to communicate with suppliers and stuff and, yeah. you know, try to make a business model out of that. So like the last year and a half, I've been designing and prototyping shoes. Um, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Put like, it up there. Yep. So right here's a prototype right here. Nice. Um, obviously for the, these are just a prototype for my final design. The soles will be black and then they'll have the three point takedown logo on them. Nice. And that was kind of like the big thing too, is like I had the shoe for a while and everything, but yeah, like, the branding is so weird. And like, honestly, like of all things, like <laughs> that was one of the hardest things to decide on is like, what is my brand going to be? Like, what is my logo? It's tough. And then like, yeah, like the college rules came out though with that three point takedown. And like, how awesome is that? Like you create a shoe and you're like, like if you want to shoot a model, like being aggressive, like going at your opponent, like being a wrestler, like that is three point takedown. Nice. Right? Like, nice. you know, going after a guy scoring as many points as you can. And then right. obviously like, there's like the cool way of holding up three, yeah, just like that. So <laughs> it, it all kind of end up working out, but yep. yeah, it's been a, it's been a fun experience. You know, I've probably made six or seven prototypes throughout this and really, you know, and the, the interesting thing that I've learned is like, cause I've actually like, I've tried to make like similar shoes to like a scrap life. Right. Yeah. And like, they just like fell apart, like right away. And really, like, like a lot of the things, like the same things are in those like scrap life shoes. Yeah. Like I actually had models made really similar to them and like fell apart after like 10 wears. No kidding. Um, and you know, and then I've had some shoes that like had like the best durability, yeah. but then they kind of look clunky, sure. you know? So then like yeah. along the lines, like I kind of learned and like, I'd wear these shoes all the time and like, just like ask as many people as I can, like, honestly, what do you think about these? And just try to get as much real unbiased feedback as I could. And yeah. Then, that's just cool, keep man. building off each model. That's um, well, and to have the insight too. I mean, obviously, you've been wearing wrestling shoes for how long, right? I mean, in wrestling shoes, yeah, much, yeah. <laughs> so you kind of got a feel for what you thought was comfortable. I mean, talking to guys too, especially at the college level. I mean, you start talking about guys who need shoes to last. You know, you gotta, and, and then plus sponsorships. Who knows that you're even getting a shoe that you like? You know, when you're when you're wrestling and the team gets a certain kind, so going through the motions of kind of picking through the shoes, like, was that what you did? Was it, you took a little bit of this and you took a little bit of that and took a little bit of this, but then you're kind of like, wait, nobody does this. I want to do that on a shoe kind of thing. Was that kind of the, yeah, the, exactly. the motions you went through? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, pretty much just trying to visualize what I wanted in a shoe. Yeah. And then, add a couple different things. And the biggest thing was like, is like durability. Yeah. Right? And like, even like as a, as a first time company owner, like I'm sure this year, you know, probably my, my biggest downfall that I might see is like quality. And that's mm -hmm. like, I, I don't even know how that will go. And like, I've put the most amount of money into like the highest quality materials I can get. Sure. Yeah. But even then, like, like you'd think that like a Rudis has got to be doing that. Right. And like their shoes fall apart all the time. So like Constantly. it's definitely going to be a, a learning year for me. But the only thing that I can do is like 
you know, just back my shoe. If something goes wrong, just try to communicate and get the people to, you know, if, if their shoes fall apart after a month, like <laughs> it's unacceptable. And like, you just get them a pair of shoes and yeah. then you have to learn from every year and, you know, try to not make those mistakes every year. So, well, and you've been wearing these shoes for how long? Like you've been testing yeah. them out for how long? Man? Yeah. So, and I've actually, I've, I've actually like, I've damaged like a pair of shoes of these that are very similar. Already. Really? Yeah. So, no, it's nice. This, uh, this material right here, it's a pretty unique material, but I've actually had this fray off on me and I've had to change the material. Oh, wow. Okay. And, you know, so like I've learned stuff like that. And then even like you can see, originally I just had this hot printed and the logo fell off. So okay. now having it hot printed and then also sewn on, Yeah. you know, so like just learning things like that, like this is my third pair of shoes like these that I've already had. So I've no got kidding. a lot of time. You know, I've had nine months to just wear these things every day and that's really good. try to beat them up. And that's cool. You know, obviously get some good wear out of these and yeah. they still look in pretty pristine position. They do. I was going to say, know. you got, you got shoes there that look like they're still pretty brand new, man. Yeah. You, you know, know? <laughs> been wearing them for a couple months and yeah. they're still holding up pretty good. And they, nice. they, yeah, they keep that like, like that new feeling for a while. Like, right. you know, they're not, and they're not flimsy, you know, I know I can't wait. It's really, really <laughs> Thick inside. This, yeah. this fat dude's ready to get a pair of those on. That's yes, for sir. sure, man. So when they get in, I'm excited. And it's good to hear they're on their way. And it, trust me, I totally know the pains that you're going through trying to get stuff back over on time. I mean, we learned like just with the business that I do with customs, you know, and, and going through a, a an area foreign, they're going to go through your stuff, look at it. And sometimes they're not even going to look at your stuff right away. Your stuff could sit in a corner for a month. You know, it's really, really, when it comes to overseas customs, it's kind of the same thing here. They do what they want. Like they, whatever palette they see, if they're like, oh yeah, okay, well, we'll wait on that. They'll let it sit around, you know? So there are struggles with that. So I hope people understand because it's not easy getting stuff in house when you're dealing with like a Pakistan or you're dealing with, especially when the materials, like not all the materials are from here, right? So there's certain things you got to get. So, I mean, if people are just patient enough to, to wait to get something good, right? They're coming. They're on their way. I know I'm excited to get mine. So I'm pumped. Oh yeah. So let's start from the beginning now. Let's start from the beginning of Brock. You started in, were you, are you from Denmark? Is that where you're born and raised? Yep. Born okay. and raised pretty much right in the city limits. My fun fact that probably, I mean, nobody would know about me is the Denmark football field is actually named after my grandpa. Oh, no kidding. So like you see me get really into coaching. That's like family, family limit, like yeah. lineage. Like my, my grandpa coached at Denmark for, for football for probably 30, 40 years. For sure. Uh, so nice. really into it. And you know, it's kind of, kind of cool to be able to carry on that legacy with coaching. So did you, did you, when you were young, what was your first memory of sports? What it, was it because your grandpa coached, was that part of it was football or, where, where um, did you really begin the sports journey? Yeah. So, I mean, it started with hockey at a really young age. Wow. Like four. Yeah. Hockey so was, in Denmark? Was, no, it wasn't even in Denmark. <laughs> it was uh, my mom's side of the family. They got a couple of hockey players and my cousin, who's my okay. age, played hockey. Okay. So that's kind of how that began. Nice. Um, but then I gave that two years. Um, but the second year, my, my dad wrestled a little bit, just like a little bit. Like he was yeah. like. Back when uh, high school used to have like the 95 pound weight class. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So like pretty much like a freshman <laughs> in high school and they're like, yo dude, like the one guy that's under 95 pounds and they like, got him to join the team and stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so he joined the team for a couple of years and then hit puberty and then he no longer needed them. So he quit, you know, um, but he, he liked, like, like he liked the idea of wrestling. So yeah. he threw me out there and I just loved it, man. From like day one, you know. So you were little. You were little when that yeah, all started. Five, right? years, five old. years old. Okay, so that's about when Liam started. But um, we're with the coaching side of it. Were you always the type of guy that had good backup in your corner? Your parents are a good support system, things like that. Like, how was that kind of? Uh, I guess, um, oh, lack of a better term, how did they help you through that? How did they, were your parents a big proponent of you wrestling? For sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. It was. I mean, just even like the sacrifice at like a young age to really believe in your kid. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, yeah, for it, sure. It's a big ask, even if like your kid's got all the talent in the world and they're older, like yeah. they're like 14 and to get them to practice every day. <laughs> you know, like I was, I was like 10 years old and like, I don't know if you know what like Fox Valley Elite is. But oh, like, yeah. So I started out at Fox Valley Elite and yep. like, you know, like just for my parents to drive me all the way over to Appleton. It's the like, least, that was, that man. was like a 45, yeah, 45 yeah. minute drive me and Ty Lee would just beat each other up every day. 
Yep. I just saw him the other day. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Nice. And big Kakana boys. And then, yeah. Yep. Through time, I started going to X Factor and then okay. Kangaroo. And like pretty much like how it worked when I was a kid is like Scott Pilot. Uh, yeah. X Factor. X Factor. Yeah. Yep. So, um, like you would just, what like in like the Bianchi's and stuff like those oh, they nice. would traveled every every tournament yeah um but like my parents didn't necessarily come to every tournament just because my dad my both my parents are small business owners as well yeah so they wouldn't travel like everything but like you know like they'd get me in every practice and okay then yeah for, for traveling to tournaments and stuff i'd just jump in whatever van i could and <laughs> going out to like big poor nationals like all the you know pretty much everywhere like same thing that liam's doing right now yeah just, yeah you know. getting as much in as he can so when you, when you started out, I mean, you're, you're in a small town. So we used to actually, the house we lived in in Oshkosh, we actually went and got the remnants of Denmark mat that they had They were, yep. They must've gotten a new one. So I, I can't, I think I was working in Oshkosh at the time and someone had just used mat for sale. And there was actually a girl that I worked with that went to Denmark, Sarah, she was older than you, but I can't remember her last name. But I picked this mat up and I was like, yeah, it's like a purple and yellow. She's like, where'd you pick it up from? I was like, I think it was up by Denmark. She was no way that was the high school mat so we had a chunk of your high school mat in our dining room for a long long time like we didn't have i don't think we had a dining room table in the right spot for about four years five years because that mat was in there but when you when you started wrestling and you were young right where did your parents take you to when you were that little um i mean it was honestly and like it was just like every youth tournament like i would wrestle like every saturday sure every sunday were they taking you to fox valley elite though was that like the first yeah, thing so that was fox valley elite was like the first thing really yep wow so, yep so fox valley elite for like two years just solely fox valley elite yeah then as i got older x factor was a little bit closer yeah um and obviously like, guys like paul bianchi were in that room like yeah Hila. i mean there there was killers in that room then like, yeah right like i wouldn't you know i wouldn't go on record of saying like we're better than Askren is now because i don't <laughs> like by the numbers that i just don't think that's true but like we were pretty close yeah like, I think in one year there's like of division two, like of the 14 state champs, I think like eight of them were out of that club. I remember going to, and this is at kangaroo, but I mean, if you're talking about that crew, I remember going to kangaroos where those guys would partner up in the back and we're talking freestyle season still. Yeah. And, but, the, but those guys are throwing each other and having fun doing it. Like you heard boom in the back corner. Cause someone just got their head, you know, slammed into the mat but they're all having fun doing it. They're all having fun beating the crap out of each other. They got back up. They shook hands. You know, they laughed about it, that kind of thing. So if you guys are doing that in the Fox Valley Elite Room, I can only imagine because I know how the Lee brothers are. And you guys are crazy, by the way. So you guys, you had a really good crew to come up with. So as you start, you know, like you said, you were kind of going to any kind of tournament you could around here. What was your first tournament memory? Um, So I would say not necessarily like, like my first memory of a tournament but like my first like breakthrough moment where like i felt like i really broke through and like i still remember that to this day yeah was uh taking eighth place at iowa postseason nationals i was like you know like obviously i'd placed a couple smaller national tournaments but like those that know wrestling know that like there's like national tournaments and then there's like legit national right (laughs) and like back in the day like iowa postseason was like the tournament to go to it was one of them yeah for sure and yeah that was before like flow existed like super 32 kids didn't exist at that time right yeah so like if you were a youth kid like and if you wanted the best competition you went to tulsa or postseason or both and so when i placed there i remember that was like big time that is pretty big dude that was back when super 32 was literally it was invite only i think it was was 32 32 guys in the bracket only 32 and no and no like kids division like i was only in middle school so i couldn't have even have gone that's right it was all high school at the time so you got down to post you got down to postseason national postseason right you said postseason nationals you hit it kind of big and that's i mean that's big right i mean so you come back home and what kind of what kind of fight did, did you notice a difference in yourself after that kind of when you come back home and start competing around here again did you start separating yourself a little bit yeah i mean for sure there's no there's bragging like, there, yeah, tell yeah, them facts tell them yeah facts. i mean the facts the, the like the facts of the matter are is yeah. like i mean you go against the best yeah you're gonna come back and it's just such a big fish small pond right. i mean like right. even yeah like i was talking about at practice today like my sophomore year like when i won state i really tech the kid that took second like <laughs> nice. you know what i mean so like there's like that type of separation that's all yeah um, for sure for and sure. yeah i mean it's just it's just unreal i yeah. mean because like when you fully give your all into it like yeah. and you're like truly obsessed about it in that manner yeah. like i mean yeah like even 
like even watching like Liam Russell nowadays, mm-hmm. like, now he's like starting to like really, you know, full force into puberty and stuff. And, like, right. Strength, like, Growing, yeah. like I saw him like, you, and you got to think about this from like a parent, like financial and like commitment perspective is like another kid that is spending their money to go to Greensboro, North Carolina in the preseason. <laughs> right. And like, like Liam texts the kid. So mm-hmm. like that to me is like huge separation. Like that kid sitting down with his family and being like, I'm ready to go to this tournament mm-hmm. and expecting them to probably pay, I mean, over a thousand dollars to get to that. Tournament. Well over. Yeah. yeah. Well over. <laughs> and like to have that type of separation. I mean, that just kind of proves it. And yeah. Like, yeah. Liam's like that same way. We're like competing and training 12 months out of the year. Yeah. And know, that's, so. and so we, we kind of, I, so I competed at a higher level. I wasn't in wrestling, but I was in soccer. So I knew what it took. I knew that it took dedication because a lot of what I did w- wasn't camps. You know, when I was young, my parents didn't afford a lot of that stuff. Like I didn't, I didn't have any types of like camps to go to. I would, I had a curb, I had a garage door and I had a Yorkshire Terrier as a defender. Right. So I did everything that I could with what I had, with what I was capable of doing. And it made me pretty good. You know, I did, I played for some national teams, things like that. So now knowing what the kids have available to them and to not as a parent, to not get them that is in to, So first of all, you have to know what your kids goals are, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. You want to know what your kids' goals are. You don't want to put them in through something that you obviously know they're just going to get spanked. Right. Or they don't have the desire. Well, when I, th- I kind of equate it to like Kerry Collot when his, he told his dad at like nine, I want to be a world champion. I want to, he's like, I shouldn't have told my dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause from then on, he's like, once you start, we ain't stopping. And that's what I told him. I was like, those are your goals. Like those are real. And this is what you need to do. So, I mean, all this, this used to be a workout area down here. This all, this whole area had, a, had the mat was right here. And then he had the bikes and he had a, a bow flex over there. Five o'clock every morning, you're down here. I didn't care what he was doing. I think I think as long as he was lifting, push ups, whatever. There was no regiment to do anything. Yeah. It was just to get down here at five a.m. That's it. So I told him I was like, "This is what just high school is going to require." So if you don't like it now, <laughs> good luck. You might want to think about it, right? So where your where were your parents at? And when the not necessarily when you brought your goals out, but like when they saw that you were starting to do better and you were starting to grow as a, as a, as number one, as a kid, but also as an athlete, did they start saying, Hey, we got to kind of get you to this stuff. Or was it kind of, you're getting info from your coaches, taking it to your parents and your parents like, all right, let's go. We want to take you. Yeah. Uh, I think it was definitely a little bit of both, but like from a young age, I've just always had like drive. Yeah. yeah. I just knew what I wanted. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Like I'm a psychopath. Dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, li- like I'm literally here for like 13 days. I'm doing like, I'm, I'm at camps for 12 of those days. And like, yeah. it was like back to back. <laughs> like we got done with work, went to one practice. I went to kangaroo and then like come do this podcast. Like I, yeah. I just, you know, I have the ability to like lock in and really focus, yeah. uh, which is like a very desirable trait to have as like an athlete. It is. Yeah. Um, And like, I would say like, you know, like my, my mom obviously like never wrestled and my dad, like, didn't really wrestle a ton either get sure. huge into sports yeah so like i would just say like they definitely knew like that they needed to like get me to practice and stuff okay yeah yeah. but like it wasn't like they were like pushing me but like too like if i like and there's like one specific time where like i didn't want to cut weight i was actually after i won my won my first day title in high school yeah and i was like screw this dude I'm <laughs> you like shit for a couple yeah, weeks right? yeah and so like you know, and I'd actually, so this was postseason nationals, my sophomore year. And I yeah. beat the kid that wanted it at 106. And I was, I was split with the guy that made the finals at 13. And I decided to go on 20 and I just wrestled at 106 <laughs> a couple weeks ago, but like I was growing, like, it just like felt weird. Like it felt yeah. weird at that point with like cutting weight and stuff. And yeah. I remember coming back from that. My mom was not too thrilled. <laughs> she was like, you're not taking it serious and stuff. So like, yeah. there's a little bit of that, but like nothing sure. too crazy. Like definitely not. Sure. I'm sure a lot of more parents give more guidance, but like, I just felt like I, I didn't need, like, I really didn't need as much. Like even yeah. like I was cooking for myself at like 14, like to like meal prep and shit. Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, like that's when you know that like <laughs> that's you're right. taking it on your own is like when you're starting to take those steps like that. So yeah. for me, it's like my parents like were supportive. Like they went and got the groceries, Yeah, you know, sort for of sure. deal, And like, they got me to practice until I got my license. Once I had my license, they were like, Yippee! Yeah, you know, like they were, they were probably pretty excited. Like that's where we're at right dude, now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because yeah, like yeah. I mean, literally, 
I'd go to the Wisconsin RTC once a week. Yep. Yeah, you're saying like, you got to think like when I was in high school, we didn't have AWA in Green Bay. So right. I went to the RTC once. Yeah. I went to the Askren location, like the main one once a week. Okay. And then I went to X Factor like once or twice. Mm-hmm. And then I'd go to Kangaroo once or twice. Oh, shit. So like nice. that was a lot of driving mm-hmm. and like my parents were you know, uh, three years. I mean, fair enough. Like they're pretty worn out. So like <laughs> when I got my license, like my parents were ecstatic. Yeah. They were, they were so pumped, dude. <laughs> no idea. We So I've, I've actually had Liam out a couple of times practice driving. Cause that's kind of where we're at. And I was like, once May hits, you're driving yourself, dude. Like, oh, you're sure. driving yourself. So we, I remember, I think Petey told him that too. I think <laughs> Lucas Pierce said to Liam, he goes, when May hits, I'm not driving you anywhere anymore. As you get your license, you're driving yourself. And I agree. Totally agree. So I take him out though, but he has no desire really to get his license. Oh, <laughs> so we're this weekend. We'll be doing a lot of driving next week. We're doing a lot of driving, you know, and I would put him through the ranks because we got these nice tight alleyways with snow banks and stuff. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like things on the side. So we're going to get some driving practice. And so we'll see what's up, especially once winter hits. But so your yeah. parents did a great job getting you around. I mean, obviously they kind of, it seems like they didn't take a back seat necessarily, but they were just kind of in the wings. You knew what you were doing and you, you were surrounded with the right people. It's not yeah, like they got, they got me in the, in the right circle. Yeah, correct. To, to correct. So, so you had it, you had a really tight circle. You had a good circle too, on top of that, as you started to grow, you know, you get into middle school, things like that. Like how was, how was middle school growth for you in, in wrestling? Cause you sometimes like Liam was 95 going into sixth grade. And then all of a sudden he's 125, you know, how was that going from sixth to eighth grade? How was that growth period for you? Did you struggle like a lot of kids do, or did, were there just, did you happen to grow kind of decently where it worked out? All right. And you just kind of, yeah. I mean, I would say like I had constant growth throughout middle school, Okay, but yeah. like I didn't get quite big enough for my freshman year. Okay. Um, And that's like the one thing is like sitting back as a coach and like having wrestled like pretty yeah. much at like, Besides, like, the Olympics, like, the highest level you can wrestle at. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, like, conflicted on cutting weight because, like, there's, like, because, like, and and it's weird because, like, you only you only get, like, one life, right? So, like, this is, like, your only wrestling career and, like, your, you know, your dad and mom are probably pretty excited and, like, want you to compete at, like, a level. Your club coach probably, like, you know, like, wants you to compete at your best. But, like. And it's like, why, like, why, why even take any attention from training for like results in middle school? Oh know? yeah, for sure. Cause like, and like, you're seeing totally. a lot of guys not do that. Like, especially in Wisconsin, like aren't, aren't cutting that weight. Mm-hmm. And like all of those guys, I think have done pretty well for themselves. And I think it speaks volumes for a lot of the coaches around here too. I mean, they do have the reality of, you know, obviously like Josh and those guys that were, that went to Missouri and wrestled in NCAA division one, stuff like that. They understand that aspect. And I think, yeah, the bigger, the bigger picture aspect. Correct. Sure. Correct. So like where, where you were, I think there, we were still in that mode of, you know, like I came from rubber suits and throwing up, right? Like that was, that was crazy. I mean, I wrestled in high school. I quit my junior year, but there's a reason why I quit. I just wasn't built for it. You know, I was not that dedicated to it and like keeping my weight. What? <laughs> like it was no. So I, I played soccer, but there's dedication to that. And there we had Frank Jasper on. We talk a lot about nutrition here because we're not big into cutting. We do cut. We I gotta stop saying we. I gotta cut that we. out of my vernacular. But you know Liam cuts, but it's like eight pounds because he's got that fat. You know, still the cut. He's not depleting energy when he's cutting. You know, whereas we saw <clears throat> a lot of kids, <laughs> like you mentioned in middle school, were doing it because their dads cared about the results they were getting. They had to go win this because, you know, you didn't win this last year. We got to, we got to win it this year. So we're going to cut 15 pounds at 12 years old. You know, like it's kind of crazy. You're going to have a hard boiled egg and a piece of celery for breakfast. Like, come on, man. Like, yeah. And, and too, like, I mean, division one scholarships aren't getting handed out. Not at all. Not right? at all. And like, and like reasonably too, like, and even like, I'll take this a step further. And this is where like people will probably, you know, don't like it, but like, I mean, even for your state tournament, like if your goal is to win state, like great, yeah. but like, don't think that you winning a state tournament is getting you a D one scholarship running right. the lineup. Like that's just a joke. Like, <laughs> right. and like, and, and so like what's, what's kind of back ass words is like, you know, like you, you should be, you know, like if you're going to cut weight, like cut weight at super 32 mm-hmm. cut yeah. weight at postseason nationals, cut weight at Fargo yep. and then cut weight at UWW like yep. world team trials. Right. Those are four tournaments. 
that's still a lot of cutting weight. You know, like that's, that's like pretty much four to five months of watching professional weight cutting. right? Yeah. There. <laughs> and then, and then like, if you want to, you know, maybe the state tournament, if you need to, yeah, guys like, you know, like, but like your goal should be to work so hard and not focus on cutting weight. Yeah. But like you separate yourself and it don't matter. Like Keegan O'Toole, it don't matter what weight he went in high school. Like he was teching everybody. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like he separated himself through training and like, it's pretty plain and simple. Like, yeah. Like, and I don't think he ever did cut much weight in high school. Like, Not that I'm aware he just of. Wrestled really hard and got really good at wrestling. A lot. Yeah. And really, like, really good. When you're really good at wrestling, man, I mean, you really don't have to cut much weight. And like the effort you put in the cutting weight, if you just put that into like just trying to get really good at wrestling, I mean, yeah. I feel like you're going to like it way more. Like, for sure. You're going to, you're like, you're not going to burn out as easily. And like, there's just a lot of advantages to that alongside of like, actually trying to like get some man muscles for college right like, right you get in college and like dude everybody is just so strong <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my God. well and everybody there won like, a state Spencer championship thing, dude. yeah it's like you know you wrestle some guys on and you're just like i i really don't understand this like, well and the reason why i asked is because you know who it is you know like it's not and you're gonna go out and wrestle that guy like you gotta it's not like you're gonna work yourself over like fuck snow am <laughs> But it you it, you have to go out saying I'm gonna get this I want to get this you know at least have goals when you're going out instead of like you said you got to lose like a champion you got to lose with dignity and going out and just flopping against the guy even though he may look make you look like you are but you still got to wrestle your ass off. I mean I looked at the picture and some of the video that you had I mean you were wrestling your ass off you weren't not trying you know and yeah. it's the same thing with Lucas against Bo Bassett I mean Lucas got on the legs like twice. That's yeah. a lot. I mean, trust he, he me. He got to his legs first. Right. He struck first. For a guy like the wrestling a guy like that, I mean, I think Liam wrestled Bo when they were little. When when we had Wisconsin Red yet. Yeah. Liam wrestled Bo, got tacked by him. You know, it was it was hilarious because it was that whole Pennsylvania team was tacking everybody. And our Wisconsin team rolls up to the mat and we're like, Oh, we got this Pennsylvania team. Yeah. This is not gonna be fun. Yeah, no. And Wisconsin's on the rise too. Oh like big P- time right PA now. was just 10 years ahead of everyone. Correct. You know, like that's that's just the reality. Yep. Correct. They're, they're no longer doing anything that we're not. Mm-hmm. And we also have pretty similar like training situations. In Wisconsin Correct. And with like, in terms of like high level coaches mm-hmm. yep. and like good partners at around every weight in the room. Well, what's, and, what's great though, too, is that the guys that came from all the, all this hard, you know, work and, and discovering things, they're bringing it back. You know, guys like you that are coming back and working with clubs and, and doing the extra things now that that help these uh, the younger kids the next generation come up you know like before we didn't have division 1 college coaches around here yeah no you had some true. i don't i i don't think growing up like i had any in here full time no no i mean and like you know and that's not to say i didn't have good coaches but Correct. Like, right like you know like rob lee's like scott pila like yep. whatever like those guys they had knowledge they, they had yeah, the like, knowledge, they had knowledge yep. um but like there's definitely some things that like you got to, I mean, even like a ton of stuff that I learned wrestling over five years. Right. Yeah. And like I wouldn't have ever known that in high school, but now like I can come back to youth practice. I can teach these kids that. And Correct. Like, so it's like that knowledge transfer right now. And, and two, I mean, obviously you got to give Ben and Max a lot of credit. I totally. Mean, they're, yeah. They're like, I mean, obviously I've been on the payroll at Askren and like they're, yeah. they're taking care of a lot of those guys, Yeah. which, you know, at the end of the day, like money does talk yeah, to a certain extent, like you got to love it, yeah. be willing to give time to it. And also like, they've got to keep making your time worth it. And I think that they do a good job of that, which sure. is why yeah. they have so many division one guys at like, I mean, they have several locations. Well, and, and here's the thing though, too, is like each coach works perfectly for a different guy, right? Um, ben doesn't work perfectly for Liam. Josh does, you know, Max works great for Liam and there's, there's different philosophies and like, we just didn't have that blend before, you know, we didn't have that mix of coaches that have that knowledge. And now that they're back and they're giving back, I mean, like you said, Wisconsin's jumped exponentially from where they were, you know, maybe not compared to another state or whatever, but from where we were, we are definitely going up. You know, we got the Aiden Sinclair's and the Marisola's and, you know, the EO tools that have come through here. I mean, you can start naming at least five to 10 to 12 guys that have come through here that are now either all American all the way, or have won a championship. So whether it's division three, NAIA, division two, division one, there are guys that are making noise. We got Noah Mulvaney just went to Bucknell. He just wrestled the other night. I can't remember what his result was, but I mean, these, these guys are proving themselves now. And especially the coaches, like you said, Ben and Max, they've got some kind of key because yeah. you know, they, they've, they're putting it together and they're doing a really good job with it. 
The, um, the key is is that they're getting enough kids to believe in it to correct. actually give in five, six days a week. Well, numbers don't lie, right? Yeah, numbers don't lie. I mean, if you've got a hundred kids that are putting in yep. 50 days a week, or if you have 10, you know, I like the I like the hundred number. It gives yep. you a lot more opportunities for guys to get good. Correct. And then totally two, agree. if one guy doesn't show up at practice, well, it doesn't matter. There's 99 others. Yeah. Yep. So exactly. like I think, you know, that's the big thing. Like when I was growing up, like the circle of guys that were putting in that time was so much smaller than what it is right now. Yeah. Um, and you know, I mean, part of that is like location, you know, totally like going yeah. back to, you know, what I said of like the club situation when I was growing up is like, I was traveling to, you know, in high school, I was traveling to Milwaukee. I was going to Wisconsin RTC. Mm-hmm. Like now all of a sudden, I mean, you look at, at us now, I mean, in this location, we have, we have kangaroo, we have X factor, mm-hmm. AWA, we have aviators. Yep. I mean, and Fox Valley and Nazar, still. Nazar, yep, and Nazar, yep. still like, and those are all within an hour radius of of the of like where yeah. where I live, like where Liam lives. Yep, totally. And so like that's, I mean, just we have just such an access to clubs right now, which it's is crazy. I mean, it's huge for Wisconsin wrestling. Correct. You know, so, and like and like talking about this so it's like I coach in Michigan, and mm-hmm. like there's like no clubs over there. Like if you really if you get good at wrestling, you have to transfer pretty much. Like you'll like go Lowell. Yeah, you go to Lowell or like Detroit Catholic Central. Yeah, and, like, those guys pretty much just like all do like their own internal work. Like, no it'll kidding. Be, like, the Shamrock Club out of DCC. Yeah. yeah. The Low Club, obviously, like Michigan Grappler is a club that I coach. Um, but like we have we have people travel three hours to get there because like that's the only option. And we're still like our club. We buy a full day of driving. Yeah, like we like we we average less than like just like even like Green Bay's like wow like AWA does on a daily basis. Holy so, cow! Like, the club wrestling just isn't isn't as big, and like where it is big is like just like I like Shamrock Elite, like high school stuff. R.A.P. Mike Cross, by the way, yep. I yep. couldn't believe that when I saw that. But yeah. I didn't know him personally, but like oh. a lot of people that uh you know are in Michigan really yeah. like that dude. So I started um what is now the um soda city slam uh sawdust nationals um it was something that it was something that allegedly Kleine was talking about a while back but i i got together with the frame ayala and got him together and things like that we put that together and that, the first year we did it i had mike kraus come and man talk about energy like holy cow like i don't know i know i have a <laughs> And I have plenty of energy to go around, but I can tell you at eight o'clock when I sit down, I pass out. Right. I don't think that guy ever slept. Like I'm pretty sure the entire time he was up at that term when we had it, he said he was, Oh, I was up for a while. I was up till like midnight, one o'clock in the morning, kind of doing this. And he goes, I knew I had to be up at like six, seven. So I can get tight six hours of sleep. in." And I was like, Holy Christ, you're crazy. You are nuts. But I can't believe that it's that desolate out there for wrestling. I, I thought there'd have been, the pocket clubs kind of like, yeah, I think it would be yeah. Michigan's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Especially lower Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like they're, <laughs> they're pretty good to where like, you think that they'd have us like all this like structured stuff like yeah. Wisconsin, but like, yeah, they really don't Well, I mean, like Simmons Academy. I mean, but, yeah. like, they're a little bit further, but like, I mean, it's pretty much like that's saw, Simmons. right? Yeah. Saw. Those saw guys. Right. Yeah. Simmons, yeah. Simmons actually a lot like Krauss, like super high B. Like, yeah. Just, I mean, he can get two hours of sleep. It doesn't matter. <laughs> And he's like ready to go because yeah. we've been up to the UP now and like my and my wife's from Niagara, um. But we've gone to the Iron Mountain tournament up there. We've gone to you know a couple of smaller ones when he was little, right? Um. And those guys don't like clubs up there because it takes away from the school practice. You know, guys, whatever they got going yeah. on. That's the that's the old school mentality, right? That's the way it used to be. Was like. If you're representing another club at a youth level, yeah. other than your own hometown, you're a trader sort of deal. Right. That was like a re- and like that was a true thing. Like when I was a kid, it's like whether or not like you signed up for a tournament under like your hometown name or like your club and like, yeah. what singlet you wore at the tournament. Yeah. Like right. and like that was like a huge thing. Wonder and like, right. you know, I think I think the UP just lives like 10 years behind everyone else. Totally. Um totally. Yeah, totally. yeah <laughs> totally to say the least. Do, yeah. So it doesn't surprise <laughs> me that you know, if they, if they still feel that way, but Cause I know like even around here, like it used to be like that. Yeah. Like, it used, yep. like even, even like, look at, look, like, look at how good Luxembourg Casco is. They used to not go to clubs. Really? Like, like they were literally losing their competitive advantage and like none of those kids were going to clubs. Yeah. They'd all register under LC, like wear those singlets. Wow. Yeah. And like, I'm not, yeah. I I'm think not, I remember like, Bastion's doing it. That. Like that's, 
that's some good loyalty. But like, I'm just saying like, that was like the old school mentality. Right. right. And then people like over time were like, okay, like this is ridiculous. Like we, we can't get <laughs> as good as these guys that are going to clubs 12 months out of the year. Yeah. And, like, training with like people from all over like yeah. you know and then i think it kind of people had to accept that yeah well you had to i mean well it's just like uh uh i heard when when uh what was it beast cage um closed up right and awa bought it like there i mean don't get me wrong there's some people who don't want to give ben ass money you know they're like where are we gonna go where there's no other club around here you know like you're gonna drive another two hours somewhere or something like that to go um, they saw crass, you know, crass is over there too, but, yep. um, they're just, you know, the loyalty thing where we really like going here. We we you know, people love Dennis Hall. They love going to practice with him. He was a unique dude, you know, um, there were some people that weren't too happy when it happened. And it's like, Hey man, you gotta get better somehow. Right? Like, I mean, just, just bite the bullet, you know, for a while, I wasn't a Ben Askren fan either. We wound up sending Liam to Askren because numbers don't lie. Right. Like, I think Ben can attest to the times <laughs> probably been after him on Twitter, kind of giving yeah. him crap about something, but it, the numbers don't lie. It's proven like watching the guys that were, Liam was wrestling and seeing where they were at, at his club. And I think it was at aviators at the time. And then he's wrestling. You can see the difference. You know, you can see the old school wrestling technique, versus the new stuff that's coming around and it's going to be here to stay, you know? So it's, it's good to see a lot of the coaches though. Now are, try, are starting to work together. The club yeah. coaches are all starting to click. They know what they talk I, to I each like, other. I like that too. That team it's Wisconsin awesome. is tight. Yes. Like, very all tight. Team Wisconsin, super tight. Yep. And it's a good thing. It works. It works. So what well, back to you now, when you were kind of coming, you got done with middle school and kind of coming up in eighth grade, you're going to be going into high school. Obviously, we know Denmark wasn't a powerhouse by any means, but like, what were you, um, what were you kind of striving towards once you're getting into high school? Like, what, what weight did, were you 106? I was 106. Yeah. 106 I, mean, right I was even like, I wrestled like, like when I'd wrestle national and stuff, yeah, compete in like 100, like a hundred. Yeah. So I wasn't like 94 small or anything. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I actually, I started out high school pretty, pretty hot. I was like 28 and oh, and I was like nice. starting to get cocky and shit, you know, <laughs> dude, like have fun with it. Like, yeah, cause like a lot of people fucking wrote me off, dude. Like a lot of people were like, yeah, like, well, and cause this is like, I mean, dude, you got to think like 10 years ago is like a long, like I came into high school at 10 years. Yeah. And, like how far Wisconsin wrestling has come. But yep. like, it used to be like the old mentality. So like people would be like yeah, we'll see how good you do when you get in high school and shit. And like high school is <laughs> tough and like, and whatnot. And I start off at 28. No, just fucking <laughs> up everybody, dude. And you know, yeah. and then, like, I think I take like my first loss or like a couple losses here and there. And like, I just, you're like, I, what? I, yeah, dude. Like, I mean, yeah, it was just, I took a couple losses and then, uh, you know, like ended up, it was really weird. So like, I mean, our sectional was pretty tough. So like, at, yeah. at our, our, sorry, my, our regional. So I had like, Michael Bannock, who's like a senior at 106, yeah, just won Iowa postseason nationals at like 106. And then I had Paul Bianchi, oh. who was like, oh, yeah, older, a little bit more mature at the weight. So I was like, fuck this, I'm going 113. <laughs> so I'm like a little 106 pounder. I bumped up to a 113. And dude, yeah, I like, I like lost a close final to the guy that ended up taking fifth. He was a senior, okay. Dylan Mickey. Yep. Have you ever heard of him? Yep. So I lost to him in overtime. And I had to do like a freaking wrestle back and I just flopped super hard and did crawl. Oh like, no. And yeah, dude. It was oh, like a no. huge shit show. And <laughs> yeah, like literally like, and me and my coach, like I literally, I literally like just helped out of practice. Like coach, uh, Tim Capanos at Denmark. Yeah. We're like homeboys now. But yeah. like at this time, like, you know, and like I, had, I had really hadn't gotten like the best training that year. It just yeah. yeah, was, I mean, there wasn't really anyone for me to really work out with. And a lot of things just like, you know, I question kind of whether or not it would work out and like, right. like, thing about like doing the easy thing and stuff, which was like transferring, obviously like go to like two rivers or Luxembourg. Or yeah. That's what you're like, saying. Yeah. You stuck you know, it out, like, man. I already, like I already like knew all these guys. Like I was already in kangaroos room more, you know, just as much as the Denmark one. Like yeah. I was already, I'd grown up with all the LC kids doing like the Bob Burso camp and like, you know, like all this stuff. And then like two rivers, like Paul Bianchi is like my best friend. Yeah. Like, like as like yep. growing up and Dude, stuff, like he's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, like all the Bianchis <laughs> and stuff. And so like, there's a couple thoughts and then, but you know, like the main thing was like, I just have like lineage with like my grandpa. So like, yeah, my parents really weren't for it. And I was kind of thinking of like, you know, like being supportive is like, that was like the double edged sword moment. Like they really wanted me to win for Denmark. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, but like, 
you guys aren't seeing bigger picture. Like if I want to be the best, if I want to be division one level, like I got to leave. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't care about state titles. And then just being me, like just constantly traveling to every practice. Okay. Okay. And so like, I mean, I end up getting it done. I mean, you know, three state titles, three times state champ, man. I mean, up, you know, getting, getting my D one offers and stuff. So, I mean, I ended up working out, but I mean, definitely was a gamble to stay. Cause at that point, like I, I wasn't practicing with like anyone that was like, so, near like near like that like i didn't have like anyone within like 20 pounds that was like yeah you yeah. know any any sort of like even for like just drilling like drilling with a good partner while well, like yeah. they give you good fuels is like you know i can go learn something from somewhere else but like if i don't have the a person that gives me a decent reaction yep and like two yeah like my high school practice i literally just scoring kids like every five seconds so, so like you hear that's, that's you, what i would do you hear a lot from coaches that talk I and mean, we're going to talk more about your high school stuff but you hear a lot from coaches that, you know, especially now, like partners don't matter. Partners don't matter. The partners do matter. You know, like, I mean, like you said, you can go somewhere and learn something. That's fine. You know, you can take something away from a guy that may not be as good or maybe he's lighter or whatever it is. You can work on something with that, but like to get a genuine, like match feel, you got to have a partner that's willing to go to that level with you. And not every guy is right. I mean, you almost have to become like best friends with the guy. Like, it's like, yeah. this is my practice partner, like all the time. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, ever like, I guarantee you like anyone that's really good, like mm -hmm. they got their guy at every level. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. Like right now, like Liam and Lucas, like what they got. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah. And like the same, like I had the same sort of deal when I was growing up yeah. and like everyone I know that got good, like they have like another practice partner that like complimented them. Yeah. Right. Like, totally. You know, I like the X Factor Club. Like, mm -hmm. Like Dewey Krieger, nope. Chris Yauk, like they're back to back at 138, 145. Yeah. Me and Paul were back to back 106, 113. Nice. You know, so nice. like that was like, you know, like it was all of us that were practice partners. Yeah. Yeah. Like right next to each other, just beating the piss out of each other. Every day, <laughs> you know, that's awesome. So like you, you, yeah, you like, you need those partners. And like, you got to You think about it, like, when do people really get good? And that's Division One. What happened yeah. to Division One? Well, you have the best partners. Right. <laughs> you have a college coach that was probably an All American or national champ that just, beats the brinks out of you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So when you, you talk, it was the first year that you went through high school that you, you didn't win state, right? Your freshman year. Yeah. Didn't, didn't qualify. Didn't qualify. So, so there's that. So now you have that in your head, right? That's got to work on you a little bit as you go into your sophomore, you're trying to figure out what you're trying to accomplish and how you're trying to accomplish it, right? You're a young kid. So as you're kind of going through your sophomore year, you're in, to me, the way that I kind of balance is it is that the regular season conference duels, things like that, that's all practice to state, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it matters. Don't get me wrong, especially to the coaches. I mean, they want to win a, a duel. It's so it matters. But at the same point though, too, as a person, as an individual, as you're going through that season, you're like, all right, this, you know, I won this match, but I got to work on this. Cause you know, this, I didn't do very good. Were you finding yourself, um, I guess, for lack of a better term, uh, just growing more um, wrestling intelligence as you were getting into your sophomore year. Did you find yourself kind of prepping yourself a little differently? What were you, what did you try to change from sophomore year, or freshman year to sophomore year? Yeah. I mean, I would say like the biggest thing was like a trying to change my strength. Okay. So like serious strength training yeah. and like consistent and like, you know, like the right diet, like eating a lot of protein and stuff and like really trying to like put on muscle. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I was like the big, that was like the big thing. And then like my, my emotional maturity, like, okay. I, yeah. I used to like, you know, I've had my moments where I was a crier, like fit thrower and stuff and like youth and stuff. And yeah. like, I wasn't necessarily like that in high school, but mm -hmm. like what, what I was, what like, you know, like you just like lose it in a match, like body language, you know, yeah, like body language yep. and like your ability to just like stay calm and just stay wrestling. Yeah when you're getting stressed and a guy's pushing you, like I would say like that was one of my biggest things It's just like jump level, level headedness through the whole match and just trying to wrestle and That's like a big key, not yeah. just like constantly worried about like what the call is or like if I scored or like, you know, I'm getting frustrated. Cause like that hinders so many kids, like, yeah. so many kids just get hindered on like just trying to overlook wrestling as like this big pressure thing compared to just like having fun rolling around competing. Yeah. You know, and I, and I can see, especially coming from a kid's side because you got your parents that are there, your parents are pushing you, your parents are, you know, maybe not pushing you like, Oh, come on, you gotta, you gotta win this, but they're taking you there. And you're like, Oh man, they brought me all the way here. Cause I, I mean, Liam was one of those kids that he's like, you drove me all the way here and I only did this. I'm like, yeah. So then as a parent, I had to like, and as an athlete too, I kind of understood, but I had to step back and be like, yeah, but you did this 
pretty damn good compared to last time. You know, you may not have won. And sometimes if he wasn't winning, it was because of his body language and his attitude on the mat because he was down on himself or he, oh, I beat that kid last time. This time I lost to him. It's like, you gotta, it's okay. Yeah, it's going to take a second. So as you kind of went through that growth, as you got into your junior, because you went state your sophomore, how'd that feel? Number one, coming from your freshman year, not even making it to state your set, your sophomore year, you win it. So let's talk about that for a second though. Yeah. I you mean, know, dude, so it was wild and two is like, I like couldn't get over excited. Cause like I wrestled. Sure. So the number, the number two guy in the state, like I teched in the sectional finals. Wow. So like, and this is the kid, like he's for sure going to be the kid that I wrestled in the finals. Yeah. I just tech them. <laughs> so for like a week I'm sitting there and like, you know, everyone's like trying to get like hype and like, you know, and like the biggest thing was like just staying composed. Like yeah. I knew I knew I could win it, but like just sitting there for a week and yeah. like having to like conceptualize that and go to practice every day. And like and two, like my biggest thing is like around that time I just like kept trying to overtrain. Like I would I'd get done with practice and I'd like go like run like six miles on the treadmill. It was like super <laughs> like I'm talking like the week of state. Like, even though like my weight was good, yeah. I would like go like run six miles on the treadmill. Jeez and like Christ. looking back, like that stuff was like stupid. But like <laughs> yeah, it's like that was like my biggest thing is like just like not being, you know, an idiot and like trying to like relax and just like Yeah. Did you deal with any injuries at all? Um, yeah, I mean definitely here and there. Did like, you? So my senior year though, like nothing season I, ending though, but no, no. Um, I mean I've I've like torn a rotator cuff. Okay. Like I okay. I yeah. Need to get surgery on it. Yeah. Uh, but like I needed to take a couple months off. But yeah. the big thing uh, is my senior year, actually, I had locked a kid. And when he landed, yeah. like I like pretty much like cracked the bone like right here. Uh-oh. And I, so I, my, I couldn't open my eye for my senior year state finals day. Really? And yeah. I didn't, oh. I, I, I didn't open my eye for like seven <laughs> days after the finals It's actually like, I oh, didn't shit. enjoy like that whole day. Cause I was just like sitting there and like, I couldn't open my eye and it was just like tearing, but I couldn't like do anything with my Oh eye. no, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, after this, I'll have to, to show you a picture. Of yeah. It. It's, it was, it was insane. Oh. And so like, that that whole experience is like really cruddy and, and then like too like they're like well like you can't do anything you can't sneeze yeah. you can't like you can't what? lift yeah because like you can't like heavy breathe oh so, like, if you sneeze like you might like yeah you might like mess it up so yeah like i'd like hold my sneezes and like dab it and stuff it was horrible you, they tell you like your eye might pop out or something like that's crazy yeah i mean you sneeze your eyeball out of your head yeah pretty much Holy crap. yeah yeah. Oh my God. That is, that's crazy. Yeah, so, my, my senior year, I actually had to battle through a lot. Cause there was yeah. like the rotator cuff, the eye, and then, um, and two, I got mono that year. Oh, but like, and I was like an idiot Jesus. too. Like at this point where like, I just kept trying to overtrain it. Like I never let yeah. myself rest. And so like, it took me a really long time to recover from mono. Cause like, I would just work out every day. They'd, oh. like, they'd tell me to chill. Like I wouldn't go to school. Yeah. Go, it just allow me to work out for like four hours. So like, you know, and it's like, that wasn't good either. You're built different, man. I mean, any other kid probably would have gone home and not done anything, you know? Yeah. So you're built a little different. Yeah. I mean, like how, if you're just sitting at home, like, what are you going to do? And like, you know, it's like, and too, like, you know, like I, I say like wrestled at a uh, battle on the bay that year. Yeah. Kind of like right when like the symptoms started showing and like, I lost, like I lost to a kid that I tacked. Like I, I pinned this kid in 40 seconds and I tech pinned him and I lost this kid senior year. It caused me to not go undefeated. Did you so because I never experienced mono when you were going into those matches that that's particular day. Did you feel like it was just a cold or just had maybe like you felt, well, I'll, I'll get the tournament done today. And like, like, like a 50 year old smoker. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> like, that was like the only thing. That's I was pretty like, bad. I, I would just get like really heavy winded. Yeah. And like my chest would get like really tight. Really tight. Okay. And okay. Yeah. I mean, it, but. So like that was the thing. It was like I was coming off that loss in my mono, so I was just way too antsy. Yeah, um, sure, sure. Yeah, that makes it, sense. But man, so so as as you're kind of going through your your junior year, um, were you getting attention? Yeah, for sure. So because I, mean, I had I I had the third place at Fargo my sophomore. Year. Okay, okay. And then I took second at World Team Trials also that year. So nice. That, that definitely helped. Yeah. Oh yeah. Get attention early. Okay. Okay. Um, who was like, who was calling you? Who was talking to you? I mean, honestly, it was a lot. Was Tom talking to you already? Yeah, Tom had been talking to me. I visited there twice already my junior year. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Um, 
And then, you know, a lot of Big Ten schools, but, like, I wasn't one of those kids that necessarily wanted that attention. I just wanted to wrestle. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, I think, and actually, like, too, like, I would recommend that for everyone is, like, you know, if you're the man, yeah. you know, maybe go to a school that, like, the men are going to go to. But, like, you know, like, there's nothing wrong with going to a smaller school. Because, like, even the smallest schools, like, they're still going to have resources you've never had before. Well, look like at Grandview. Partners. I mean, I mean that's a that's a perfect example of a school that's just been dominant, right? And they're D three, right? NAI. NAI. E- yeah. See, it gives, there's proof that there are plenty of schools that are out there that have what you're looking for, somewhat. But I, we've been, and I don't know how your parents dealt with it with you because I mean, it was I didn't get recruited for soccer because my <laughs> my grades are horrible, but I was playing national teams, so I didn't care, right? I didn't. That was the pinnacle to me, anyways. But with with uh, um, with grades and things like we tell Liam, hey, you got to like the school. You got to be able to go to school there to get a degree in something that you want. You know, that's because wrestling ends. You know, it does end and you have to have something that you can fall back on. So did you have that more in your frame of mind when you're looking at schools or what or were you kind of just like, OK, I don't want to wrestle here. I don't want to wrestle here, but I'll wrestle here. I like the coaches. Or were you not, were, did you think about it all? It's a lot for a kid to go through. Yeah, you know, that's it is. 16, 17 years old. I mean, you're thinking about the next four or five years of your life. So what were you kind of going through when you were thinking about that? Your junior year kind of starting it out. Yeah. Well, I definitely, I wanted to be taken care of financially. That was big to me. Yep. And then I, I forgot was, to mention that. One. And, <laughs> and I, I mean, I'm, you know, I grew up caring about my grades so like ivy good, was good. was close to being on the table if i oh. would have focused on my scores for a yeah. little bit yeah um just being an athlete you know yeah. they can pull a lot of strings for you like i'm yeah. not talking like i was like 4.2 gpa but i was like 3.8 yeah, so yeah. Like they can they can pull a lot of strings for you so like that was yeah. kind of in question too um but then it was like i kind of wanted to go to a school that was like top 25 like yeah, i'm not for sure i didn't want to go to a school where it's going to be top 10 and like you know like there's going to be X, Y, and Z guy. And like, I actually, yeah. I did want to go to Wisconsin. Okay. Um, not the Barry Davis, probably, uh, you know, probably ain't watching this, but, uh, <laughs> so you never know, dude, I was, and this is what's wild. So my junior year, I take an unofficial to Wisconsin. Okay. It, they don't put it in writing. I always get offers in writing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? So like, and like Wisconsin is my, my number one school. And like, they kind of knew that like, I really wanted to go to Wisconsin too. Yeah. Um, and they're like, yeah, like we should be able to get you like a 50% number. And I'm like, you know what, honestly, it's not going to pay for all my school, but I'm fine with that amount of debt. Like it probably would have been like 40 or 50. Sure. Or something sure. Right for the opportunity. Yeah. And yeah, cause I really want to be a badger. And then yeah, all of a sudden the next year comes, I take second world team trials again. I all American at Fargo. <laughs> like I do all these different things that I like, should improve my stock and like getting recruited by like a ton more schools at this point. Yeah. And then Wisconsin comes back and they're like, Oh, 10%, like being in state guy. And then, and then they had nobody. They had the, I mean, <laughs> they had no, like the whole time that I was in college, they didn't have a 25 pounder. Jimenez got hurt. Yeah. And yep. then they pretty much had like nobody. And then all of a sudden they had to pull Eric, Eric Barnett. Red red. Red. So there was like a three year window where like they, they could have had me for like, I mean, I'll probably would have went there for like 30%, right. but 10% was just like laughable. Like a slap in the it was face. like a slap in the face. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> no. So there's, there's been stories that I've heard already and I'm not going to say what school, but like kids have gotten contacted by a coach and the coach tells them, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah you're a guy. You're a guy. You know, we, we want you, we want you at this spot. We want you at this spot. And they're like, and you will be a preferred walk on. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. kind of guy am I to you? Like the guy that takes out the trash? Like what is that? Yeah. But you know, you gotta, you it's a game think about it though. Yeah, nine point nine scholarships. It's yeah. a business. That coach. It is. Like he's got to be like, okay, there's got to be like you got to offer preferred walk on spots yeah. to guys that aren't quite necessarily going to be the starter they mm-hmm. might they might end up slotting in there but like yeah. they just take care of school they're not going to cause you issues right right like you got you have to find those guys mm-hmm. and then there's got to be guys you offer like 30 to 40 percent you're like this guy's probably going to start for me a couple years yep maybe not all four but like sure that's why they're going to get that and then you just have to like i mean there's obviously like blue chip recruits and then there's yep. like blue chip recruits that are dumbasses and you just like <laughs> a lot you just give them a full ride and like if they fucking bust you just try to get them to quit like, right i've seen this like firsthand like they will literally try everything that they can do to make you quit 
if you like don't perform like if you're that level guy like yeah. they're they're gonna try to force you to quit so you get that scholarship money back <laughs> that's crazy and it, again like it's, you a said, business, it's a business it's a business it is a business because those coaches are getting paid the schools are trying to make money as well and the athletic programs have to bring in a dollar amount you know they got to be able to do something so yeah you got to be careful where you're putting those scholarships at but so as you're getting to your junior year not to getting to but getting through your junior year getting into your senior year had you decided by that point where you wanted to go by your senior year? Because you've been you've been taking trips and yeah, you know, I have been, contacts and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, I took I took my visits and stuff. I went out to like Wyoming. I went to Northern Illinois. Yeah, I went to. I actually, I like when they told me that, and they were like, I was planning on taking a visit that weekend. Yeah, and they had they had like called me that week and like told me that, and I canceled that visit and felt so fucking good. Oh, <laughs> uh, it felt. <laughs> I mean, I was pissed, obviously, like, when they told me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, like, we're still really excited to, like, get an in-state guy in. I was like, I'm not busy. I'm um, not. Nah, like, I'm the phone. Dude, it felt, <laughs> felt, like, so good at that time. I was, like, a kid, like, a little shyster. And I was just like, Click. and, like, obviously, I was pissed, but, like, just yeah. something about hanging up the phone and then having the upper hand and just be, like, and I'd already taken a couple unofficial visits. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. was just like, yeah, I don't need to. <laughs> um but yeah it's, hey you know at least you knew what you wanted to do though like you had an understanding of what was going on yeah i mean i wasn't i didn't want to go right a lot, a lot of debt I mean, that's right you know not that it's a good education that people don't pay a full price for it right like, right, yeah, right. I just that wasn't that wasn't my but you guys have an advantage you have a you have a skill set that people want you know and yeah. it pays money so i mean why wouldn't you want to get the most out of it so senior year you're kind of deciding already where you're gonna go right you could maybe you had like one or two in the basket but where, where were your thoughts? Cause I'm noticing this a little bit more now, especially at, at uh, like the super 32s, were you focusing on, and you like competing. So I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyways, were you focusing more on just getting ready for that next level? Or were you still focusing on some of the bigger tournaments that you had to go through yet? Cause some guys don't go to Fargo once they've decided and they've committed, like they don't like, if they know where they're going to go, they're like, I don't really need to go there. Some of the coaches want them to, don't get me wrong, like especially their college coaches. But were you were you more focused on what was going to be coming up or were you still focusing on what was in front of you? Yeah, I mean, I was still competing. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I competed, I mean, Super 32 as a senior. Yeah. Then after the season, I went to like, uh, I went to actually wrestle the college, like the college in open? juniors. Yeah, like yeah. UWW juniors. Yeah. I wrestled. I went out to Vegas, wrestled that. Okay. Yeah. And then I also, I doubled entered into the high school tournament as well. Okay. It was like Central Regionals was down in Vegas that weekend. Yeah. And then five days later, I went and flew out to New York and did like the journeyman. Damn. Classic. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah, I was competing, man. Yeah, I, you were. I was competing, but like. Hey, you are doing the like, shit we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, man. I mean, I was. You know, I, I, uh, you know, obviously excited for college and stuff, but yeah, really had told me I was going to redshirt anyway. So it was like, I want to fucking, I want to win these things. Right. The biggest well, yeah. thing is like, I'm, and you know, what I regret is, I mean, dude, Fargo's a dope tournament. Yeah. Go, go there that your senior year. Yeah. Just, you know, and like, cause I had been training and like, yeah, you know, like you start hanging around like the group of guys and like you're kind of focusing on folk style and stuff. But like, if you're redshirting, like, yeah why not toe the line and try to win that far? Like, I wish I would have like, well, and I know of a kid that, that didn't go this year to super 32 as I mean, it's his senior year. He didn't go this year because a coach advised. He's like, you don't need to go to this. And like, I think the college coaches that they're going to, that they're going to are like, why aren't you going to that? Yeah. Like, why aren't you going to this? And it, because the mentality of, well, I mean, you're already committed you're doing this kind of thing. You're going to be going to this tournament anyways, too. You don't need to go to that. I mean, there are other tournaments that are out there. We go to journeyman classic as well. The super 32s. But again, those are like, those are the tournaments, right? Those are the ones that people place their sights on when it comes to trying to get some kind of attention off to the side besides their high school season. Right. So I was kind of curious. And I ask a lot of guys that question is just kind of like, you know, are you, once you get that commitment and you know where you're going to go, do you kind of ease off? You let off the gas pedal and you focus more on what's going to be coming up. But like I said, I kind of knew what the answer was going to be coming from you. Yeah. You were still going, you're a gamer. So you were, you're trying to give it. Yeah. Did well, you it's like, it's like too, like, why, why wouldn't you want that? You know right. What I mean, like, like 
you know, holding a super 32 belt, like yeah. pretty badass. You yeah. Know? Or and even like, placing there, way, you yeah, know, placing like yeah. getting on the Fargo podium. Like mm -hmm. those are accomplishments that nobody can ever take away from. You. And I know someone's probably listening like, Oh, just placing. Well, you know, sometimes it's hard for a kid just to fucking place at that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like, I, it's hard, you know? Yeah. I think uh, Liam took third is, I think he was in middle school. I think it was the 11 U division actually that he took third, but then like his first, his freshman year, he went on two, man. Like it's a whole different ball yeah. game. Like 90, 97% of people that place at Fargo and freestyle go division one. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, Liam was and that in the 3% percent's probably heavyweights going to play football instead. Right. Basically. So, you know, <laughs> right. That's a, and good that's, that's a fact. Like that, yeah. I know that my, the guy that owns my club is a stat on pretty much anything wrestling. Yeah. And it's <laughs> it's true. Stats on everything. I believe it. It's, it's insane. Totally believe it. So, you, so you got, you found out where you're gonna go. How exciting was that when you kind of figured it out? I mean, were you making trips galore after that to kind of go practice with those guys, or how no, are you dealing with that? Not really, in a sense. It was just kind of like once I, I mean, I was glad to get that part over. Yeah. You know, of okay. Like the whole commitment thing and knowing. Like, yeah. Well, and just like taking away from my training. Right? Yeah. Like one weekend, I went up to Wyoming. Like another weekend, like at Cornell. Like another weekend. Wow. You know, like at Northern Illinois. And like it just, and then like another weekend at Central, and yeah. Like just a lot of like, a lot of weekends where like I'm not really training, and like you go on these visits, and like you think you're like, oh, like I'm gonna get on a wrestling mat. Like those coaches can't can't wrestle with you legally. Nope. I mean, like, it's against the rules. And then correct those college kids are already busting. You can't practice in their practice. Like that's also a recruiting Is violation. That? Wow. Yeah. Um, unless it's unless it's outside of season. Okay. Like, sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's like, it can't be like an official workout. So like a lot wow. of these times, like you just go there and you just fuck off for the weekend. You're hanging out. So like, that's it. Yeah. yeah. You're pretty much hanging <laughs> out. So like, I was glad to get that over and then just kind of have it figured out and be able to focus on the senior year. Right on. Um, And what sucks is like in an ideal world, I think everyone just gets recruited after their senior year. So then they never have to worry about it until they're kind of done with, you know, yeah. like the bulk of their high school career, but like that's never going to happen. So were no, there going to be earlier and earlier? Which which state championship was the most memorable and special to you? Ooh, um, probably my junior year, just because uh, my junior year the period the first period went zero zero, and yeah. I got hit in like a nasty switch. <laughs> so I, I ended up down two zero, and then I just put it on them. Yeah, you got anger three, yeah, came like in seven or eight two or something. <laughs> so like. That one felt the best, and like two, like yeah, that kid wanted to beat me really bad. So like <laughs> obviously, <made> fun. yeah, <laughs> mom, he gave you something. Right? Yeah, he yeah. gave me something. Like his, his like mom gave like, you know, like his mom was like kind of you know like yelling on the side and stuff. Yeah, well, just like and like seeing that kid in like a lot of practice rooms, and like the mom would always come up to me and be like. Well, my son is like gonna be at your way and he's gonna give you a run for your money. I'm like, we'll fucking see. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, we'll see. Yeah. And so that one felt the best to yeah. me for sure. Don't sing it, bring it, sister. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool that you, I mean, obviously it's not like you're like yelling at her or nothing, but that's cool that you kind of took it to that level. You're like, all right, well, let's see what happens, man. Bring Bring your kid to the tournament then yeah. and we'll see what happens. I mean, he actually made the finals too. I yeah. mean, I didn't even know if he'd make the finals. I mean, he made the finals and you're like, all right, you're like, you know, let's do I this. Like, all right, let's do this. And yeah, it felt <laughs> it felt good. So so you got once you got through high school and as you were kind of getting into college, what was the hardest part? What was the hardest transition? Education and wrestling wise, what was the hardest transition for you? Um, and uh, you know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna spit a little bit of insight. I don't know how many people see us because it's so late in it, but like, that's cool. Um, like they're the gonna big, hear it later yeah, on, hopefully. Yeah. Um, like the bait, the hardest part for me, uh, was just like slowing down the pace. Right? Okay. So, like, like I, I wrestled 19 matches my whole red shirt year. Okay. Right. So it was just a lot of training. Yep. And like, I wasn't the guy, like, Drew Hildebrandt took fourth at NCAs, actually yeah. transferred to Penn State. So, like, that's the guy that I was behind. So, like, okay. going from wrestling to like 150 matches a season yeah. to going down to 19, it was just a very slow pace for me. And sure. like, I, I think it's very hard to go from that to that. The I'm training not saying it's wasn't not a necessarily like a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like the training is just so hard and it's just so focused on training yeah. and not just competing like every other weekend and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, but the training was, I mean, obviously if you're a gamer, you want to go out and compete, you want to get into a tournament and put that training to work. 
but the the training was just kind of it felt like it was monotonous it was kind of just like okay when am i gonna get to the is that kind of how it felt or was it were you just frustrated with it yeah i mean in an ideal world yeah i would just have been good enough to start as a red shirt okay like, like never okay. never red shirt go yeah. straight through it yeah wrestle 40 matches every year yeah. sort of deal and like that would have been, would have been my ideal world and yeah. like that's a big thing too is like and too, like you never know, like when you're going to be healthy, like what's going to happen in the future. Like, yeah. like, like Grayson Clark yeah. is a prime example. Like he just won both of his refs lost at Purdue. Tech, tech both the tech kids. Both the kids. Yeah. It's like, dude, just get that kid out there. Like he's a killer. He's a killer, dude. And like, <laughs> like you get that. Like he's going to take his losses. Like he's going to he's going to take course, his losses yeah. to the Big Ten. Yeah. But like you get that fire coming out of a high school kid. Yeah. Like there is a different type of fire that's like it's like not relaxed. It's not patient. It's mm-hmm. like. Point go, to go, prove. go. Yeah. It's like point to prove. And like, you just put them in the college room and let them get in the lineup. If yeah. They, like, you know, if they're the guy, like, I mean, look at like Levi Haynes, like, yeah. All like some of those guys, like, yep. I mean, especially, I mean, like guys like Mark Hall, like, yeah. Wind like, them up and let them go. Yeah. Like took, took like one little lump in like his first duel, Mark Hall and his like debut, but then yep. NCAA champ, true freshman. All the way. A lot of guys are doing that. And it's just like, like Yanni did it. And like mm-hmm. he, he actually, like he, when he was on a podcast, he talked about this too, is like, mm. sometimes you just like think that you're better than you are. And like, that helps. Sure. You know? Yeah. And like part of like, it's a mentality down and like just wrestling in the room for a year and stuff. Like you slow things down for yourself and you get outside of like the, just like the high school mentality. It's like kill, kill, compete. compete. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and you cut, become more relaxed and you become like buddy, buddy with everyone in the room. And yeah. like it takes away like the killer mentality. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, there's just something about that. I mean, you, you don't want anyone that's like, like a lunatic. Kill, kill, yeah. Kill, kill. <laughs> yeah, dude, you don't want that. So, so yeah, kids dude. learn to tame that, learn to tame that down a little bit. So as you got into college, um, where were some of the, uh, struggles that were that were, I guess, on the mat. I'm um, de red shirted, so you went yeah. through some of the opens, but then they released your red shirt, right? Were there some of the hardships that you had kind of competing? Like, where were what were some of the toughest roads that you had to go down your first year wrestling in college? Dude, it was neutral, bro. It was, was it really? Yeah, so like everybody in college is usually like top and bottom. Yeah, I was like pretty good top and bottom. Okay, like, okay. Um, didn't struggle there at all. But I trained up way too much Greco in high school. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. So like you were that P-Lock crew yeah, though, dude, too. The so P-Lock crew. And like, <laughs> dude, and like the big thing is too is like, especially in college, like, kids are just constantly looking to get to your legs. And, yeah. like, as you get to that level, like the mistakes become less and less. Yep. And like I'm not saying like you can't become a scrambling guru, yeah. but I wasn't in the program. Like I, I had decent scrambling from high school, but I wasn't in a college program where like that was going to be huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I think for like, I wasn't like, I, it's not like I was taking it to the guy like all the time, like looking to get the shot right. within like the first 10 seconds. Yeah. And like, you have a lot of kids that do that. It's like a lot of kids like are in your, are in on your legs in five seconds, Yeah, even if they're not the best finisher. But like that part was weird for me. It's like, I had to get a lot better on neutral sure. in college, like sure. a, a ton better. Yeah. And could and just two, do underhooks. Yeah, and you well, and two, you just like you just ha- like everything has to go right, like fast, explosive, like driving through, and like that's the biggest thing is like in high school you can get away with a lot of stuff yep. by just having really good intensity, yeah, and stuff. But like in college, like you have to have purpose with all your moves of like hitting intent. them correctly. Yep, yeah, a lot of like it's it's got to be intent based on what the opponent gives you. Mm-hmm. So yep. like that part of just like not trying to be like you know like be a junkyard dog and like try to work through everything and for sure. Like, slowing everything down and like trying to get that maturity but yeah by by my later years i got pretty good in neutral so and that was that was big i think that we hear a lot of i mean we hear a lot of the you can get into a takedown but you can you finish it especially in college right that's the yeah. hard part you can get on legs all day long but are you going to score points from it and so that's where when you start talking about intent that's a lot of things that i've been pushing with liam mainly i would say since last year just because the guys he was wrestling were you know the, he was able to win you know to to a certain extent but it wasn't always it didn't look like it was always like a hard win you know like uh it wasn't the moves weren't intentful just because he was such a big kid (laughs) coming into that weight and then a lot of these guys were you know third fourth year whatever but some of the guys that he's wrestling were still you know going to the club with him and he was rolling through them but the moves still weren't they were a move you got it in the legs you shot but how much intent was behind that move you know you kind of watch the power that someone puts into a move 
watching super 32 for example a lot of kids down there that are wrestling and they're i mean they're there to win just like every other kid is but you can tell the difference between the kids that are that are going to go to college and wrestle and you can tell the kids that want to go to college and wrestle the ones that are going to go to college and wrestle those are the ones that were putting like they as soon as they had a leg you weren't getting out you know especially yeah. high school wise now like with college you can tell the guys they're all doing that they're all putting they're all getting your leg just as hard as the next guy it's can you finish and how much how much like like oomph are you putting behind it because that seems to be the biggest kind of kind of push besides the technique behind it is that you got to have the strength like you said you yeah. get in the college room these guys are strong strength, explosion yeah yeah exactly and like you've got to put all of that together like speed strength explosion they've all got to come together as one yeah with with the technique that like is open yeah. like, that's available for you to hit right like, so what what was the what was probably your biggest takeaway and like what was your biggest moment in college wrestling? Um, I'd say probably probably my biggest moment was probably in that in that Michigan duel. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, for sure, most fun moment. Um, yeah, you know I didn't qualify for nationals. I went, I believe, like twenty three and eleven my senior year. Okay, I got ranked as high as twenty six, but. What's the qualification for that? So for some people that don't understand, what is what is that? It's frustrating, man. So, like, if you want to qualify for the NCAs, but possibly never start a day in your life, go to the Big Ten. Okay. But, like, if okay. you want to start and have a good experience and, like, you know, like, you're going to have to really be a top 15 to qualify, then yeah. go to a different conference. Okay. And that's kind of the frustrating part. So, like, my story is, is, like, there's – the coaches ranking and then there's RPI. Okay. RPI is like statistics, who beat who head to head head to head. Yeah. And so like they're based on both of those rankings. Mm -hmm. Right. So my conference had eight guys in the RPI on the top 30. Yeah. Right. So like we should have at least gotten like four or five bids. Yeah. We got one and one is Anthony Noto. Yeah. yeah. He's number two in the country. Right. He was 30 and one that year. I was the two seed. I was ranked 26 in the country. Didn't bring a bid. Jake Ferry was a three-time NCAA qualifier. Didn't bring a bid. Holy shit! Yep. And then, and then Bryce West was also a two-time qualifier. Yeah. And he took eighth in that bracket. Wow. And so, like, just not a good year for bids. Did what Man. I could. I mean, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't enough. I yeah. mean, it's frustrating because, like, I mean, realistically, like, I did drop like a tough duel like the week before. Okay. Okay. At MSU and like, gotta you know, you gotta take ownership for that. I sure. probably, I probably win that duel meet. You know, mm-hmm. twenty four and like, or like twenty. I probably would have been like twenty two and nine or something going in the sure. conference tournament. Sure. And yeah. like, that probably would have been the difference maker for sure. But like. I don't know, dude. It's disgusting. It's it's disgusting how many I don't hate you. the Big Ten gets. It's <laughs> yeah, and and it's sad, but like those guys are good. You know, like those guys are good too. But it's just like yeah, yeah. You, like it seems like whenever push comes to shove, the Big Ten gets an extra bid. Yeah, um, yeah. you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and then you yeah, know, yeah. too, like MS, the Michigan State Open yeah. is a really tough team. I mean, yep. Re- or sorry, Michigan State Open is like a really tough preseason tournament. Yeah. Um, and I made the finals of that. And that oh, was nice. Like, I mean, there's probably like seven guys ranked at my weight. Okay. Um, ton of Big Ten schools like Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, like all those schools, like all the, you know, like the, you know, like Arizona State goes out. Yeah. There. Like, I mean, ton of solid competition. I took yeah. second. Uh, nice. My uh, senior year. So it's pretty cool too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and see, like, I'm and just thinking in my head right now. I'm, obviously, we haven't, none of my kids have gone to college yet and wrestled, but just thinking of the events that you guys go to, whether it's an open or whatever like just knowing that you guys are are going to those i would just be like hey get to the, just see if you can get to the top see if you can get to the, and i don't care if it's a big 10 tournament or if it's the that open that you're talking about to me it's it's the college level like this is where you wanted to get to for folk style right but this is where you wanted to get to just fucking hammer it you know just go out and do what you can and after that it's done you know cuz i know a lot of kids their focus isn't you know necessarily an ncaa title they want world titles you know, and now they want Olympic titles because the game's changed a little bit, you know, since you were in high school. That's a lot of these guys are talking about. It's just world titles and Olympic titles, which is great. So now you have kids that are looking at RTCs, you know what I'm saying? So was that ever part of your vision that anything that you wanted to do is like freestyle, trying to make a world team, things like that? I mean, yeah, going back to it, I mean, definitely Greco when I was young, yeah. but yeah. I kind of, I kind of really wanted to wrestle division one yeah. and I just knew realistically, like 
yeah, I could try to make a team eventually. Yeah. You know, but like the reality is, is like, <laughs> like if you're trying to do that shit half ass at the Olympic level, like yeah. using folk style eight months out of the year, Greco a couple. Yeah. And like, even if I could make the team on the US, yeah. Like the reality is, is like there's people outside of the US that are training that shit since five years old, all the time, 12 months out of the year. We talked to Lucas Stelt about that a lot. Yeah. And it's, just, it's just a joke. Like, yeah. and I'm all for what Lucas Stelt is doing. Like, yeah. If you want to wrestle, go, go to Lucas Stelt. Yeah. If you want to do Greco. Yeah. And if you're serious go. about it, you go there. Do just it. Don't even do high school. Like, and I know it. that's like so hard to see because you're only like one athlete. Right. But right. it's like, if that's your goal, then what are you doing messing around with all this intermediate bullshit? Yeah. Just to like, say you did it. Like, right. I right. mean, that's, that's just going to hinder you. And like, you have to accept that. So like, for me, it was like, I mean, yeah, I took second at world team trials twice. Yeah. Almost won Fargo. Roman Bravo Young headlocked me to beat me. I was winning <laughs> eight, four, four on criteria and he headlocked me. And you got to wrestle some fucking great guys, yeah, you know, dude. like some really great competitors. So that's the other thing too, is like, you're, when you're in college, you made it to the D1 level. You're wrestling against guys who also had to make the D1 level. Like yeah. these guys are good guys. Like you're not just wrestling against. Oh crap! I beat them last year, and now I'm losing to them. No, 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 no. Like these guys, you're gonna have a hard time every single day against. You know. So I mean, that's the other thing is getting to have that piece of it, and then and then you get the knowledge to bring back to the kids. You know, to be able to coach, which is a big thing. So as you're kind of getting into when you were at Central Michigan, were you getting more and more into that coaching mode that you talk about a yeah, lot? Yeah, well, my coach at all is actually give me Tom Tom Barelli. He'd yeah. give me crap and be like, Berglin, I already know you're getting into coaching sort of <laughs> deal because like I'd like talk through like younger classmen. Like I just I have high wrestling IQ. Like I can talk about like every little situation. Yeah. I'm like a huge film nerd. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Like I'll just watch like wrestling film, like anytime we have like tournaments and stuff. Nice. And like, yeah. I just have, I have a Nick for it. Yeah. So like, yeah. I think he kind of saw that. And then I didn't really know. I mean, obviously after I got done with my fourth year, Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I didn't. I wasn't really planning on going back for a fifth year just because the whole COVID thing and like everyone oh, else yeah. next years. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, like I would go twenty five and like Drew Hildebrandt just took fourth at NCAs. Right. I wasn't. I wasn't quite beating them. Right. Like, close, sure. but like not not quite there. Yep. And I was like, okay, so I, you know, I didn't. I just moved back here and stuff. And then Ben actually called me like right away. Oh really? And yeah. Nice. Ben, ben got like a, somehow got a hold of me. He's like, I heard you moving back. Like Green Bay is opening. We need you. Yeah. And then so I ended up getting at the end of that. And then I just like moved to Michigan. And then just decided that I wanted to try out Grand Rapids. Yeah. Which is on the west side. Yep. Um, and then two, like somehow they found out about me again. So then, like in both <laughs> situations, like I've just like moved. And like as soon as I moved, like I just got caught. So I just. Yeah, I mean, I've just accepted I can't get away from the sport. You were thrusted into it. You yeah, dude, I tried I'm, to get out and they pulled me back in. They the just mafia pulled thing. me back in. Yeah, yeah dude. The <laughs> so gang, cool. bro, can't get out. You can't get out, man. It's, it's, you only get out by dying. So when you when you kind of you're starting to wind down college, you're picking up the coaching thing, and then obviously we start rolling into more of the adult life thing with the the company. Where was that? Was this was the shoe thing something like? Were you always? kind of thing of that or was it just you're like man you know what i want to do this Did it just yeah, hit you and well, you wanted to do it i mean i'd always like you know thought about it when i was a kid okay but then like when i was in college yeah not really as much but like i always collected shoes here and there so like it was always kind of yeah. there just not in that capacity but then you were taking like graphic design classes in college no, or anything i just like that. thought my, like sure. that was that was all learned when i started this but then yeah like that was kind of the thing is like the curious like and I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, like as years have gone, I've just noticed that like the shoes have gotten worse and worse. Yeah. Rudish is okay. Quality. Okay. It's okay. But like, but they actually do like give you new product lines every year. Sure. Sure. Like, you got to yeah, give yeah. credit where credit's due. But yeah. at like, I mean, a lot of their shoes are like 140, 180 bucks. And like, I'm, they like, finally I'm, like, just came out with a hundred dollar pair, you know, like uh, the ones that, because Liam's were about to bust out. So I had to get them a pair. Those are a hundred bucks. Yeah. So, so the, the, I think they probably saw you and they're like, wait a minute. They better be scared. Uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, just like, yeah, I mean, obviously test the market. Yeah. Um, yeah. And two, yeah, I mean, like if if anything, in into like scrap life, I don't know what they're up to, but like I've I I follow their site. Like yeah. I I mean I'm I'm in this, so like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and like I've noticed like they've had like only like size sixes for like and they only have one line <laughs> just with a ton of different colors. And, like they've only had like size sixes for like any shoe in like stock for like months. Really? Like, like it'll be like one sh- yeah, go look at their site, right? Like I have yeah. this and it'll be like size six for one shoe, and it'll be like size six and a half, but they don't even have like so like, or... yeah and so like nobody's really doing that great of a job right now and like adidas yeah. i mean dude the combat fours are freaking old in my grandma yeah and then like <laughs> yeah and, yeah and too, like i mean i actually i do like nike shoes yeah i actually think probably nike does the best job okay um, and flex like, and stuff like that yeah, yeah but like the top was again you're looking at a 150 dollar price range like yeah wisconsin yep. or i mean not wisconsin wrestling is the most blue collar sport like, right like no dude, shit like, a lot of these parents aren't shelling out 150 180 dollars for shoes no like, well, that'd be the biggest thing too is like if i were ordering the same quantities as them i'd be charging 70 dollars for my shoes right like i'm only priced at this is because like you know like a i mean i have to pay for everything myself yeah. and then like b like I'm not getting the same price that these people are getting. And yeah. like, like I'm not getting like the same like trade terms with like a UPS right. and like, and also like with my supplier, like I'm not ordering 10,000 shoes right. to get right. like that same cost. Well, cause we were talking about capital, you know, and like, too, I mean, like, it's you're hard talking about a new shoe. Yeah. Like, like when they implement the same shoe every year, there's no, like they don't have to go through the prototype process. Right testing like, and testing you know. and all that stuff like they just change the color of the fabric and like you know so yeah. they they have the robots that they can put like a shoe onto a robot yeah. foot that just sits there and flexes all day whereas you're out wearing them right yeah. like you're testing them out and like putting them to the test you've been through three pairs because something happened so you want to fix that you know you're like you're you're putting hands on to it which i totally appreciate you know that's a it's a big thing like i mean like I've been dealing with clothing for a little while and it's like, it's hard to get things right. You know, it's hard to get things when you're picky and you know what you want and you know what you've been dealing with for so long for shoes. Like you want to do a certain thing and you want to put out a certain product that everybody will like. So when you started kind of diving into this world of it, like, what did you, what were you kind of figuring out? Were you like, how did you, number one, how did you get in contact with someone that makes shoes? Was it just someone that you reached out to? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. I yeah. mean, you know, there's there's social media plat or there's like platforms yeah. where you can like kind of reach out. Yeah. But just like searching like who made wrestling shoes, and then it was like sending them like designs that I'd made. Oh, sure. Like, yeah. Okay, like is this something you do? And then like you know, like when I made these, like I had three different suppliers try to make this, and I was like, okay, which one do I like the best? Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, yep. Yeah, you gotta look at all the angles. Yeah, like I gotta look like yeah. So like I, you know, like obviously I had like multiple suppliers make the same shoe. And yeah, I'd be like, okay, this supplier is doing the best job. Yeah, and then, for sure. You know, just kind of going from there, and then as I test them out and they break, then I'll be like, okay, yeah. What are my other material options? Like, what would be a tougher material that would like fit in a wrestling shoe? Are you working on an orthopedic wrestling shoe? By chance? No, <laughs> but these things are comfy, man. Hey, <laughs> let me see it side of that that's i you know oh yeah i like that that's, that's, that's most, nice in there yeah that's the most comfy shoe on the market i stand by that that's almost like memory foam in there yeah almost almost yeah, it's dude, i mean it's that thick but it's hey, like elite athletes are spending a lot of time on the wrestling shoes yeah so man have oh, yeah comfortable. that's pretty nice yeah well, i think we were talking about the other day too about how someone had some rudish shoes not not rudish calm down relax but liam when they first came out he had, we got him a pair of, they were the gray ones. I can't remember what they called them, but um, they, they literally, the, the soles started to rip the, the seams, the, the threads were coming out of the seams. And at the time uh, I was talking to uh, um, um, Dave Schultz's wife, Nancy, and I messaged her cause I knew she was a part of the group that was kind of making them like, Hey, like these broke already, you know, like we, is there, there's some kind of, she's like, Oh my God. He goes, send those back. We'll get you another pair. So that at that time yeah. they were small and they were able to kind of handle some of the workload, you know, kind of thing that was going on. Now there's so many people have their shoes and they've had how many different designs out now, right? <clears throat> but I think, you know, obviously they fixed some stuff. But when you're pumping out that much, it's hard to have quality control over everything, right? Like you're gonna have 
you're putting thousands of shoes out on the streets, you're going to have some issues, but it seemed like a lot of them were the same, you know, like Liam's soul issue. That was, he was not the only one. We had like four or five friends. They bought some I'm like, yeah, ours did that too. Like first 30 days. And I was like, I don't know, man, I guess it's growing pains. Just got to get through kind of thing. But it's nice to be able to see someone who's hands on doing the kind of thing. Like I said, you're testing them, you're wearing them and things like that. So ultimately, Obviously, your goal is to get an affordable shoe out there for everybody to be able to afford for the parents and the kids have a shoe that's going to last them for a long time. I like how they look. I love the yeah. design. I love how far back it uh, on the back side, how far down it dips. Yeah. I love that. A little more pro- ankle protection on the side. Still got room to move. So that's nice. Is there anything else you got coming up uh, down the down the pipeline that maybe you can kind of give us a hint on anything? Anything new coming out? Um. Yeah, I mean, definitely partnering with people. Okay. Like NIL, NIL shoes. Okay. Be cool. There you and go. Then, yeah, I mean, a couple different ideas kind of been thrown around, but like the the cool thing to do would be like some sort of shoe that's similar to this. Yeah. Um, but with like a strap that comes over. Yeah. And then like make internally like the strap like pretty much have like one side be velcro yep and then the other side i make internal and that would be like school logos oh so okay I have like seven or eight colorways yeah and then like custom make like the team logo so like if somebody orders and then like they you just upload a pdf yeah yeah right onto that upload spot. A pdf in your order and then like i mean you could like because you can see i mean i'm grinding like the networking shit right now yeah yeah, yeah. and so like the goal is like kind of network and then like let's get some team like we'll get you custom shoes for your school for like 70 bucks a piece yeah and i want to get 30 orders from your school sort of deal yeah and and like that's there's never been like team shoes done before no and so like no. that's that's no. where i want my niche to be and i think it's really cool yeah that's a good and idea got everything team related and then shoes everybody's wears random crap so right on I think that would That's be really idea. cool. And like the, I mean, there used to be like the old like college Nike 2K fours and stuff. And yeah. Sweet. <laughs> so, you know, um, and that's the thing too, is like, I want to, I want to sponsor a couple of college programs, but like a lot of them are like grandfathered into like sports or like, you know, like Adidas or like Nike. Like, yeah. They don't really care about wrestling, but like they're a Nike school. Yeah. But there's a couple of them that I know, like, and like Campbell would be like the big one. And, oh like, yeah. I, one of my college buddies, yeah. like, I went to I wrestle at Central with him. He's coaching at Campbell right now. Oh, really? Liam was kind of eyeing them up for a little yeah, while dude. when we first. They, uh... they got a lot of CMU alumni there. Oh, really? Like, all their coaches and, and their athletic trainer. Is no CMU shit. CMU alumni. Or, yeah. So Interesting. Their athletic trainer was my trainer when I was at school. He took the job. Oh, school. wow. Then Dresden, I wrestled with him on the team yeah. at college. Yeah. And then Scotty Sentez was an All-American yep. at Central. And then yep. Wynn Mahalik is their assistant coach, and yep. he was a national finalist. No kidding. Okay. So their whole coaching staff, except for Josh Heil, were yeah. Central Michigan people, <laughs> including cool. an athletic trainer. That's so awesome. that's funny. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, on your endeavors, you're making this big tour here um, around coaching, things like that. Like what, what type of um, – uh, what type of things are you going to be doing other than just coaching? Are you hanging out? Are you going to do any hunting? You um, hunt? Yeah. So I hunt. I'll do that yeah. back in Michigan though. Uh, oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I'm actually, so I'm doing no wrestling tomorrow. It'll no. Play up, I'll be off. Okay. Well, um, you gotta dude. You know, I mean, dude, not many <laughs> Friday practices either. Not really. Not yeah, really. Not really. No. Um, uh, so that's I mean, like yeah, the I'm going musky fishing tomorrow morning. Oh, I'm nice. Taking, yeah. I mean, it's been a long week. So I'm taking the day off work tomorrow. You go in some frozen ass water. Yep. I mean, we booked it before we knew I'd be like that. And, yeah. You know. Where are you going? Lake Winnebago? Yeah. Or yeah nice yep. okay so there's me spots my, me and my uncle are going and cool then, you know see nice. some friends and stuff um all right and then hang out with my family and stuff but not right. un- un- a lot of wrestling though like a lot, a lot. A lot. well because next week you're back here tuesday and thursday you said right yep yep i mean next week tuesday and thursday will be same ordeal practice at denmark 3 yeah. 30 to 5 and then kangaroo 6 to 7 30 yeah um, okay and then yeah i've got camps pretty much every other day right. i've got a Hortonville camp next week. Yeah, I mean, every nice. day. And then I'll be at AWA on Sunday as well. Okay. Practices. Yeah, so Liam does, um, obviously he does his weekly stuff. Saturday we go down to Max's, and then Sunday he's back up by Josh. We got to get back into one-on-ones with Dewey. We've been doing one-on-ones with Dewey forever now. Um, yeah, 
but he took a couple of weeks off just because of, um, I can't remember what he was doing this week, but there's some weird stuff. But yeah, I don't mind Finn just running around down here, acting like she owns the place. But well, hey, I hope everybody has been enjoying the show as far as the three guys that are on right now. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it, either way. But uh, this will this episode will be out on spot. Well, a lot of different platforms. Spotify, Apple, um, you name it. It's on like 12 different platforms once I put it out on a podcast. Um, but um, yeah, everybody pay attention. You got three point take down here. Give me a shoe once. I'm going to put it in front of this camera too. Yep. Shoes. So, yeah. Follow, follow the Instagram. It's three point take down wrestling apparel. Um, obviously what you see here is a prototype. Uh, it doesn't have the, the three point takedown on it. Like the final ones will. And then, the final one, Souls, will be the all black instead of the tan. Uh, but other than that, I mean, that's pretty much what you see there is what it's going to be. Um, it's a slick looking shoe, man. Yeah, it's a it's a sweet looking shoe. I got a pair coming, so there you go. Yeah, he does. So you got was this leather? Was this gray leather at one point? Were you talking about that it would tear or yeah, have any issues? I mean, it was it was just yeah. I mean, it's like a microfiber. So yeah, it was just like a less strong microfiber. Gotcha, gotcha. And right then on. once they like once that started fraying up, I was like. Yeah, like i want this material it just has to be stronger and they're like well yeah i mean yeah you i mean you can see how like tightly knitted this looks yes so correct I don't, I don't know exactly how that process works from but, here i thought it was leather like looking at yeah. it from here i thought it was leather then i got my hands on it. this this is some leather right here uh, yes um, correct that's good leather too i like that kind of yeah leather. dude it's uh you it's always see like, that suede stuff and that's just good leather yeah dude these i i mean i can whether you consider this a bad thing from a business model or not, yeah. or a good thing for like the consumer is like, I know for a fact, nobody's paying more per unit than I am for shoes. Right. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. And I, and I know that because like, I've, I know scrap lace designer, yeah, like who's making their shoes. And like, I know the same quantity that I was going to, that I got for these, yeah. what it would cost. And it was like 60, 50% of the cost. Oh shit. So like, I know what type of materials they're putting into these shoes. So yep. like, I, and I, so I know that these are legit. Like, yeah. I know these are legit right. because of like the, what, what, <laughs> what the materials cost. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, you know, the quality of the materials that are getting into it. So right on, man. Yeah, man, I'm really excited. I hope, I hope, you know, a lot of those growing pains that Rudis have with the quality. I just, I hope I hit on that. Yeah. Um, but if yeah, not, for sure, you know, man. the good thing is I'll be small enough to handle that. So that'll well, be, that'll be good. And just be a decent human. Right. The part about doing business is like, okay. Yeah. I mean, if your shoes break after a month, just yeah. fucking message me, get you, get you shoes. And like, let me know. Be like, you know, just running a business like that. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully once the shoes come in, like things are going to go really smoothly. Well, I think, I think that's the biggest thing. I think the biggest thing is just, not only the, the the product itself, but it's also the service that comes with it. Yeah. So in the industry that I work in, we build machines. We we build machines that are like $350,000, right? So companies are spending a lot of money. So they know that they're going to get a good product, but they also need to know that they're backed up, you know, and that's the biggest thing. Rudis did pretty good in the beginning, and then it kind of slipped off a little bit. Their, their product uh, service slipped a little bit, where when you would contact them, you wouldn't hear anything or, well, there's not much we can do about that or, we don't know about this when it was like a legit issue with their product, right? And they may have picked it up a little bit now, but we have like this pair of roots that I just got them to, while we were kind of waiting. Like I haven't gotten him any since he was like eight, 10, you know, somewhere around in there. Cause I was just like, there's something else. Yeah. There's, there's something else that's, that's just as good because I remember going through soccer shoes like crazy, but well, much luck to you, sir, with three point takedown apparel. Um, we look forward to the shoes coming in. I know Liam got his shirt, so I know he's pumped up about that. So you'll see him running around with that shirt on. But um, everybody pay attention. Three-point takedown apparel, Brock Berglund. We're going to end the show right now. I'm going to play some music for you so you can hear it going out. And, uh, yeah, so that's just how it's going to go. But um, if anybody's got any questions for him, hit him up on Instagram, Yep. Facebook. Uh Yep, Instagram is kind of the main point for my is it? business. So be three point takedown wrestling apparel. Okay. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you have any questions about the shoes or anything wrestling related yep. or going to college and wrestling, any yep. of that, you know, just reach out to me there. We'll put all your stuff in the podcast when I put that uh, put that all together. I'll put your your Instagram on there and the website. I'll put in there so everybody will have access to that. But um, hope everybody enjoyed. We're out.
episodes are brought to you by Appleton Tattoo, located at 117 South Appleton Street in Appleton, Wisconsin, right off the main drag on College Avenue. You can't miss them. I've had some work done. Uh, I have a Celtic cross that covers my back that was done by Jason. We're not done yet. Uh, Jason Winans and crew, uh, the artists that he have there, those guys are the best in the Fox Valley. Um, they are definitely one to go to. If it's something that you've just been kind of throwing around, they'll make you feel comfortable. It's a very clean environment, very nice crew, um, and very willing to get done whatever you need done when you need it done. Um, you can message them on Facebook. I know they're on Facebook. You can give them a call uh, at 920-604-8289 and get in touch with Jason Winans and crew at Appleton Tattoo, located again in Appleton, Wisconsin at 117 South Appleton Street, right in Appleton. Very flexible hours, great crew, clean environment again. Uh, I would not send you anywhere else except for these guys. Appleton Tattoo.